Good morning, students. In the class, we will see about the preparatory steps. Preparatory is the period of about six weeks after childbirth during which the mother's reproductive organ returns to the original non-pregnant condition. During this period, the body tissues, especially the genital and pelvic organs, return to the condition of pre-pregnant state of woman. The presence of presence in the tissues of harmful bacteria and their toxins, typically through the infection of a wound. Sepsis is a life-threatening condition that arises when the body's response to infection causes injury to its own tissues and organs. According to the World Health Organization, prepared sepsis is defined as the infection of genital tract occurring at the labor or within 42 hours of the postpartum period. An infection of genital tract which occurs as a complication of delivery or miscarriage is termed as preparal sepsis. The primary site of infections are perineum, vagina, cervix, and uterus. Preparal pyrexia. This that we will see later. There is a marked decline during the past years due to the obstetric care and availability of antibiotics. Preparal sepsis commonly due to endometritis, endomyometritis or due to endoparametritis or a combination of these events called pelvic cellulitis. Preparal pyrexia is rise of temperature reaching 100.4 degree Fahrenheit or more measured orally on two separate occasions at 24 hours apart, excluding the first 24 hours. Within the first 20 days following the delivery is called as preparal pyrexia. Preparal sepsis, the cause of single preparal sepsis, UTI, that may be cystitis or pyelonephritis, mastitis, breast abscess, wound in infection, CS or episiotomy, pulmonary infection, septic pelvic thrombophlebitis, reoccurrence of malaria or TB, others like pharyngitis or gastroenteritis. Predisposing factors. Normal vaginal mucosa become harmful in the following conditions like cervical vaginal mucus, membrane damage, even in a normal delivery. Uterine suffers, especially the placental site is converted to open wound by damage of decidua, which takes place during the third stage of labor. The blood clots present at the placental site are excellent media for growth of bacteria. The antipartum risk factors include malnutrition and anemia, preterm labor, preterm rupture of membrane, immunocompromised patients like HIV, prolonged rupture of membrane more than 18 hours, and diabetes. Intrapartum risk factors include repeated vaginal examination, dehydration, ketoacidosis during labor, traumatic vaginal delivery, hemorrhage, antipartum or postpartum, retained bits of placenta, tissue of membranes, prolonged labor, obstructive labor, cesarean delivery. Mode of infection, prepared sepsis eventually essentially a wound infection. Placental site, lacerations of genital tract, cesarean section wounds may be infected the following way. The source of infection may be endogenous, that means where the organisms present in the genital tract before delivery. Anaerobic streptococcus is the predominant pathogen among this. Infection may be autogenous, that means the various organisms present elsewhere in the body and migrate to the genital tract by bloodstream or by patient herself. Beta hemolytic streptococcus, E. coli, and staphylococcus are among these organisms. Infections may be exogenous where the infection is contracted from sources outside the patient that is hemo he hospital attendants or the caregivers. The beta hemolytic streptococcus, E. coli and streptococcus are important among this. Pathology, the, the primary site of infection are perineum, vagina, cervix and uterus. In the infection either localized to the site or spread to the distant site, lacerations on perineum, vagina, the cervix are often infected with organisms due to presence of blood clots or dead tissue. The wounds become red, swollen and associated with seropurulent discharge. Endometrium at the placental site, vaginal wound, perineal lacerated wound are favorable sites for bacterial growth and multiplication. Clinical features, if it is a local infection, slight rise in temperature, generalized malaise or headache, local wound become red and swollen, pus may from form which leads to disruption of the wound. And there, if it is severe, there is a high rise of temperature with chills and rigor. Uterine infection, if it is mild, rise in temperature, local discharge become offensive and copious, uterus is sub militant and tender. If it is severe infection, onset is acute with high rise of temperature, often with chills and rigor, pulse rate is rapid, 
shortness of breath, cough, abdominal pain and dysuria. Lochia becomes scanty and orderless. Uterus subinvoluted, tender and softer. There may be associated wound infections of the perineum, vagina or the cervix. Investigations. The main principles involved are to locate the site of infections, history of the organisms to assess the severity of the disease. It includes a history. First is antenatal, endonatal and postnatal history. In history of any risk factors like anemia, prolonged labor, prolonged capture of membrane. Then the clinical examination that include general, physical and systemic examination. Abdominal examinations are to be done not to not the subinvolution of genital organ. Then the investigations include high vaginal and cervical swab for culture in aerobic and anaerobic media. My Midstream urine for urine for culture and sensitivity, blood for total and differential WBC, HB platelet. A low platelet indicates septicemia or DIC. Blood culture, if fever associated with chills and rigor, pelvic USG, use of CT scan, chest X-ray has taken when the suspected TB or detected in lung pathology, blood urea electrolytes may be done, selected cases to have a baseline record in the event renal failure develops later. Prophylaxis. Initial prophylaxis include the improvement of nutritional status to raise the HP level of the pregnant woman. In the initial prophylaxis include full surgical asepsis during delivery, screening for group B streptococcus in high risk patient, prophylactic use of antibiotics at the time of cesarean section. First pattern prophylaxis, a septic precaution is for at least one week following delivery until open wound is in uterus, perineum, vagina healed up. Too many visitors are not allowed, sterilized, sterilized sanitary pads as to be used. The treatment includes general care, isolation of the patient, adequate nutrition, food and um, calorie are maintained, anemia is to be corrected, infilling catheter is to be uh, used to relieve any urine retention due to pelvic abscess, maintenance of vital signs, chart for thoroughly antibiotic. Surgical treatment, perineal wound, stitches on the perineal wound may have to be removed to facilitate drainage of pus and relieve pain. The wounds has to be cleaned with cis bath several times in a day and trust with antiseptic ointment. After the infection control, secondary stitches may be given. Retain UTM products if the size is less than 3 cm can leave a lot. Otherwise, surgical evacuation after antibiotic coverage done to avoid risk of septicemia. Set septic pelvic thrombophlebitis can be treated with IV heparin for 7 to 10 days. Pelvic abscess should be trained by colpotomy under USD guidance. Wound dehiscence. Dehiscence of episiotomy or abdominal wound is managed by scrubbing the wound twice daily, debridement of all necrotic tissue, then closing the wound with secondary suture. Laparotomy has only limited indications. The nursing management, isolation of the patient, adequate fluid and calorie intake should be maintained, correcting the anemia, indwelling catheter. A chart is maintained recording the pulse, respiration, temperature, local discharge and fluid intake and output. Ensure the wound is cleaned by cis bath several times in a day and is dressed with antiseptic solution. Unnatal prophylaxis include improvement of the nutrition. In the prophylaxis prophylaxis include food surgical asepsis during delivery, screening for tube B streptococcus is in high risk patient. Prophylactic use of antibiotic at the time of surgery section has significantly reduced the incidence of wound infection, endometritis, urinary tract infection, and other serious infections. Postpartum prophylaxis include aseptic precautions for at least one week following delivery until the open wound is in the uterus, perineum, vagina healed up. Too many visitors are restricted, so the sterilized sanitary pad can be used. In infected, ba infected babies, and mothers should be in isolated room. Subinvolution, when the involution is impaired or retarded or delayed, it is known as subinvolution. The uterus is the most common organ affected, causes include gland multiparity, over distension of uterus in us in case of twin and hydramnios, maternal ill health, third section, prolapse of uterus, retroversion after uterus become pelvic organ. Uterine fibroid. The aggregating factors include retained products of conception and uterine sepsis. The symptoms include abnormal local discharge, either excessive or prolonged, irregular or at times of excessive uterine bleeding, irregular cramp like pain, cases of retained products or rise of temperature in sepsis. Signs single uterine height is greater than normal for a particular day of the piparium. Management appropriate therapies to be instituted only. 
the sublimation is found to be a mere sign of local pathology antibiotics in endometritis exploration of uterus and retinal products pepsidine in prolapse or retroversion ergometrin is prescribed to enhance the evolution process by reducing blood flow to the uterus the urinary complications in piperidium first one is a urinary tract infections the infection may be consequence of any of the following first is recurrence of previous cystitis or pilitis asymptomatic bacteria become ever infection contracted for the first time during piperidium due to effect of frequent catheterization either during labor or in early piperidium to relieve the retention of urine cysts of urine during early piperidium due to lack of bladder tone and less desire to pass urine Retention of urine is one of the common complications in early piperidium. The causes are bruising and edema of the bladder neck, reflex from perineal injury, and accustomed position. Treatment if simple measures fail to initiate maturation. An indwelling catheter is to be kept in situ for 48 hours. Incontinence of urine. This is not a common symptom. It it may be overflow incontinence following retention of urine should be first excluded before proceeding to differentiate between other two stress incontinence usually manifests in late piperidium true incontinence in the form of genitourinary fistula usually appears following delivery or within the first week of piperidium thank you thank you for listening